All right, gamers, today it's time to review the board game 300 for Sparta. All right, so in the game 300, first off, look at this massive board. Here is my hand. This is like three boards put together. It's one whole board that folds out, but it is a huge board. Now, the game gives you instructions on how to set things up. This is the Persian army here, and these are the Spartans guarding the hot gates over here. And of course, you're in this battle and you're trying to win, well, as the Spartans, you're trying to get up to 100 glory. And you have this little glory tracker that you start off right here at zero, and you're trying to get it all the way to 100 at the end of six rounds. Now, how you're going to start the game is you're going to draw three cards from either the Persian deck or the Spartan deck, whoever you're playing as. Now, the designer of the game actually amended this rule and said, hey, choose five cards from uh, the deck each. And so that's how we play it, with five cards each. Another rule that the uh, designer came up with, he said that you can discard cards at any time to add... Uh, points to your roll. So for instance, if I rolled a six, I could discard a few of my cards and make that an eight if you wanted to. It's just another use for the cards. Now these cards give you special abilities in battle or they're cancel out cards from other people. They're quotes from the movie and so it is kind of thematic that goes with the game. So those are the cards you can play and at the end of every round you're going to draw an additional card from the deck. So you'll always be drawing cards throughout the game. The next action you're going to have is to march. Now, the Persians will always march first, and if they want to, they can march straight in to the hot gates. Now, in the hot gates, they can only march three units at a time. If the Spartans ever want to move out here into the open, they can have up to six at a time fight. But right now, marching into the hot gates, they can march in three here and three here. Now, there's two sides of this board split down the middle. There's the A side and the B side. And first off, you will fight the A battle first and the C battle. A B battle next. Now, what if during the game the Spartans are up here and they own this land and the Persians are here? Well, they can move over to the side too and fight as well. But you would solve the A's first and then the B's later. So let's start a battle here. What I would do is I would add up all the points of my troops. Now, right now, all I have is infantry. These are the infantry. There's cavalry here. There's immortals here. And so I'm going to add up uh, all of my attack points, which is right here over to the left. So I got two, four, six attack points right here. And over here is my defense, which I'm kind of weak here. I'm weak little Persians. Well, if we look at the three characters, and I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be doing the A battle first. So let's look at the three characters. Here's Leonidas. Whoa, he's a 10 in attack and a 10 defense. He's hard to kill. And then we have some Spartans here that are four and four. So what we're doing is we're adding up all the uh, amounts to from the left side. So this is 18 points for the Spartans here. And of course, for the infantry, it was the same. There was six. Well, you have a little battle chart in the top left that tells you, after you add up your points, how many die you may roll. Now, according to that chart, the Persians can only roll one die this turn. And the Spartans, they had a 14. They get to roll two die. So, uh, to start off, Persians are going to attack first. They're going to roll their die, and they got a 2. Now, there's no damage I can do with a 2, because as you saw, those Spartans were at least a 4. So, let's cheat, and let's say I rolled a 4 there. Now, when it goes to the uh, Spartans' turn, they're going to attack with their 2 die, and they rolled a 7. So, here's what's going to happen. We're going to attribute our hits to each one of the characters, and you, and you get to decide where those hits are coming from on your own team. So for instance, well, four isn't enough to hurt Leonidas, so I've got to hurt one of my Spartans here. Now when you hurt one, they become injured and you flip them over. And as you see, their stats have changed. Now, this guy is stronger in battle. He's a five, but he's weaker in defense because he is wounded. I love that. Uh, and every Spartan has that ability. Once they get wounded, they continue to fight. The infantry, on the other hand, you know, he rolled a seven. Let's see, two, four, six points. He wiped all three of these people out, and as I flip them over, it just says, dead. They do not come back. Now, that's not everyone in the Persian army. Immortals have the ability to come back and fight when wounded, and there are some special characters over here by Xerxes, like generals and war beasts. He has two of each of these, and as you see, injured, a war beast is super deadly. And there's a general, not as deadly, but a higher defense. And then the 
uber immortal. These are all from the movie here. He can get a little bit more powerful too. Uh, Xerxes himself is not very powerful. He's not there to fight. As you see, he's a zero. He's a strong defense. Uh, he's worth a lot of points, though, if you get him. The little diamond at the bottom here that you've been seeing on all these, that's how much glory you get if you kill them. So this is to tease the Spartans. If they come after Xerxes and they kill him, they're going to get a lot of points, probably win the game at that point. But anyway, as you see, my infantry just gave them one, two, three glory points. So they're going to move up on the track three glory points there. Now we resolve the other battle, which should have been on B-side, and let's say the same thing happens. Maybe they injured a Spartan, but they wiped out the infantry. <laughs> now, on that round, what's going to happen for each battle? You see I have a list, one through six here, and that's where I will restack my reinforcements. All of the Persians respawn after each battle, but I have to get them in that order. Once I put some more infantry back on the board and shift people down, I can move all the other uh, uh, dead people up and use them next. Persians always respawn in the battle. Once you kill a Spartan, they are out permanently from the game. Now, once the battle phase is over, then you can move to the conquer phase, where if someone had completely wiped out the other one, they could move in. So if the Spartans wanted to move into this territory, they could. And on the land here, the Spartans, the further they move up, the further they endanger themselves, because they're not guarding the heart gates now, and I can fight them six, you know, six on three or whatnot. But they are, have the ability to get more glory. So if they reach here, they get three points six points and 12 points. So the further they get up the board, uh, they're endangering their lives, but they are scoring more glory. On the flip side of that, if the Persians start wiping out the Spartans and they start advancing, they take away three glory from the Spartans each time they advance too, which is never good. Now the final thing we do is we have to move the hunchback down the track. And I'm gonna butcher his name here, but I think it's uh, Ephilates. That's wrong, but who cares? It's the hunchback from the movie. And remember, he's the traitor. And so he starts here, and every round, he's gonna move one space closer to the Persians. And he's gonna betray them when he gets here, and the game is over. The goal of the Persians is to stop the Spartans from reaching 100 glory before the hunchback gets there. If the Spartans are able to reach 100 glory before the hunchback betrays them, then they win the game. And that is Sparta. All right, so final thoughts. What do I think about this game? I actually, uh, what was it, a few months ago, I watched the 300 movies again. I love the 300 movies. And as I was sitting there on my couch, I was thinking, I wonder if they ever made a 300 board game. So I looked online, I was like, they did. Oh, look, and it's super cheap, $10. I've got to get it. And then I bought it right away as I was watching the movie. And I was like, oh, I can't wait for it to come in. And then I thought, $10. That's not good when you can find a game for $10. And then I started to worry, is it going to be garbage? And then I looked at the pieces and I went, okay. And then I brought it to my little nephews and they were like, okay. And then we played it. And it was great. <laughs> uh, it's a really fun game. There's not much to it. And uh, here's why I was worried. One, the pieces didn't look that good. You know, just a little disc. But playing the game, it's a brilliant way to do it because when they're wounded, you just flip them over. I know a lot of people are like, man, I really wish it was minis. To be honest, the, the little tokens are very good and they play well in the game and I think that's the best option they had. Uh, the cards look a little cheap, but you know what? It doesn't matter. The game play is fun. It is there. You have just as much fun playing the Persians as you do the Spartans. And I was afraid when I first got the game if that would be the case. I thought there's no way you would want to be the Persians because it's no fun getting wiped out and losing battle after battle. Well, you're slowly chipping away at the Spartans. Yeah, the first few battles, you're just going to injure a few Spartans. But as your forces get more powerful and as you decide to put more powerful pieces on the board, you'll be able to wipe out. I actually, the first game I played, I uh, won and I actually advanced into the hot gates. Ooh. So I, that was really fun. It was fun killing Spartans and they don't come back. So it is fun to play as the Persians too. Now it's a little bit of cat and mouse. If the Spartans just want to stay there in their little you know, cubby hole, the hot gates, you can just feed them just little minions that they won't get many points off of. You don't even have to bring in your generals, your big war beast, your you know, whoever, the uber immortal. You don't have to bring them in. You can just send him just the you know, infantry and cavalry over and over again, and he'll never achieve that many points in six rounds. It's impossible. 
as the Spartans. You need to decide when's the right time to push past the hot gates. Because if the, if the Persian player is trying to starve you out, then it forces you to advance and to start killing. And that's when the Persian, if he's you know worth his, any salt, he's going to go straight after you with everything he's got. So it is some nice cat and mouse. The designer who added rules to the game, like adding five cards in your hand at the very beginning and discarding cards to get more points on the uh, pips on the die, that was brilliant. It, uh, and that's the only way we've ever played. And I think that's how you should play. Now, should you get this game? It may not look like much, but it is a very fun game, and I do enjoy uh, playing it. And you know what? For a while, I did think when it came in, I looked at it, I was like, oh, this was a stinker. I got suckered. I was watching the movie. I got all caught up. No, it's a great game, and I'm so happy about it, too. I, I don't hear much about the game, and the game is still cheap to get online secondhand. So if it looks like it's a game for you, then honestly, gamers, I think it's really fun. I think it's something you should try out. All right, that's all the time I have for now. Until next time, game on.